All right, so here's an overview of the video editing scene on Linux. I'll begin this video with a note about video editors, which is the fact that the most important feature that is currently sort of lacking on Linux is proper hardware acceleration. There is one video editor that I'll talk about at the end of this video, which is proprietary that does support proper video acceleration. Uh, but most of these do not support that, which means that they cannot use the GPU in a very efficient way to process all the frames to give you a smooth playback of what you're actually editing. And that's the reason why a lot of people struggle to video edit on Linux. It's why a lot of video editors on Linux just plainly suck, honestly. So first of all, let's take a look at one of the most popular video editors on Linux, which is OpenShot. Now, OpenShot uh, is quite old. It's been around for a long time. I think you can tell that by the interface. And it's very, very rudimentary. It's not got a whole lot of features. It's not got a whole lot of effects, as you can see. But it does have a few plugins, and it supports Blender if you want to do titles. I don't really have much to say about OpenShot. I haven't used it super much. It has all the basic stuff you probably need for most basic video editing, but it's definitely not a full video editing suite, as you can tell by the surprisingly clean and minimal UI. Another big video editor which I want to talk about is Shotcut. Now, Shotcut has also been around for quite a bit, and Shotcut, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff in Shotcut. You can take footage in, you can do lots of effects, and one of the cool features about Shotcut is that it has different interfaces for different parts of the video editing process. As you can see, it's got a color, an audio, a player, all that kind of stuff, so you can kind of cycle through those as you're editing your video. I don't have a lot of notes on Shotcut either. I have used it to edit a few of my videos. It works fairly well, and I think the export feature in Shotcut is also very, very well made. They have this whole list of profiles and they kind of let you pick stuff that makes sense. A lot of video editors on Linux will just leave this up to the user and you kind of have to do your own research. Uh, I think it's a very well made software in general. It's very polished. It's very well designed. However, it's once again, missing very good hardware acceleration. It's just kind of slow at times, uh, and it's not a replacement for something like Premiere. Now, the last open source video editor I want to talk about is actually something that I really think has a lot of potential to become highly usable. I'm talking about Olive. Now, Olive uh, is a beta software at the moment. Actually, not even beta. I think it's still in alpha. I think it's in like 0.2 or something like that. As you can see, it has an interface very similar to Premiere. You got those blocks of, you know, video that you gotta have in Premiere as well. Well, the interface is also scalable, and a lot of the keyboard shortcuts that you can see over here are actually ripped straight from Premiere. Now, you might think the UI looks quite bare bones, but it's entirely customizable. You can do that thing where you drag about windows and move them, which you can kind of do in Shotcut as well, but you know, it's a little bit more polished and well designed here. The only thing I got to complain about is the fact that it doesn't save window layouts. So I set it all up exactly how I wanted it to once, then I closed Olive, I opened it again, and it didn't have that. I don't think it saves those. Uh, you can always keep a copy of your project and go back to it because individual projects will save their layout, but it has no option to save the layout globally at the moment. Uh, you know, it's a video editor. It works perfectly fine. It's missing a lot of basic features. You can't do titles in Olive yet. Uh, so I don't think it's entirely usable. I mean, none of the other open source video editors on here are entirely usable. Uh, but I think it's a very, very good software that has a lot of potential to go very far. Now, the last open source video editor I do want to talk about is, of course, Kadenlive. Uh, there's a the little loading animation. Kadenlive is by far the single most featureful and complete, quote unquote, video editor on Linux. Now, unlike all of it's not especially new, it's been around for quite a while, you know, developed by KDE and all that. It has all those different menus for different things, you know, logging, editing, audio. I think it's got a very, very well-made interface. The interface, yeah, it seems kind of overwhelming, but most video editors have overwhelming interfaces anyway. It makes sense after a while. The only complaint I have is, once again, the hardware acceleration is not super on point. It's just kind of slow. And many of the effects, yeah, there's a lot of them, uh, but they're kind of counterintuitive. Like the title maker in Kadenlev is very counterintuitive. You, you kind of have to make the text first, then export it, then put it in. It's like a whole convoluted process. And none of these editors can really stack up to the editor that I'm about to talk about. Now, I'm of course talking about DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is the video editor that I've been using for years now. It's been my first choice because it's fast and you know, it supports different databases. So you can like switch between different videos that you're working. You can even use PostgreSQL and collaborate with people uh, over the internet while making videos. It's just a featureful editor. It's actually designed especially for Linux, but then ported to other platforms. You can get it for free on the Blackmagic Design website, but of course it's not open source. And that is a problem. I don't want to pretend like that's not a problem. It is a problem. And uh, the reason 
I rely on it so much is because it's the only complete video editor that's probably available on Linux. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what upsets me. A lot of people, they're trying to use open source software, but they're finding that there is no complete alternative to what they're looking for. Now, in the case of most things like image editing, you know, there's a GIMP. Drawing, you know, there's Krita. 3D animation, well, Blender is basically the industry standard already. However, video editing is pretty much completely lacking from the open source sphere. There's lots of good solutions for basic editing like Olive and Kadenlib and OpenShot and Shotcut. However, I don't think these are really full, complete solutions yet. They lack the polish and they lack the features that you really need. Anyways, there is one last thing I want to mention here, and it's of course, if you need to do automated video editing and automated composition, there's FFmpeg, and we all know FFmpeg. It's the most basic video editor you could ever have because all it can do is directly manipulate video files. It can take multiple in and spit one out. It can cut them, it can add effects. I'm not gonna bother looking at examples for FFmpeg because that's probably gonna get pretty complicated, but you know the drill. It's basically a command line tool for converting and working with videos, and I think that's especially useful if you're doing some kind of automated video editing thing or maybe you're turning a bunch of songs uh, into music videos or things like that for a channel. But that's just something I wanted to note if you weren't aware of the existence of FFmpeg, which is a command line tool for video editing. Anyways, I've been Denshi. That was my video on the video editing scene on Linux. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.